Hello. Today I wanted to show you an example of using a complex object, the complex object I created last week. So you see I have a, a basic templated file here. Uh, you can see I've included uh, complex object.scad and I've created a new module called thingamajig. So I'm going to create a thingamajig and I already have complex object being removed from it. Problem is there's nothing it's being removed from. So uh, let, let's, let's fix that. So let's just create ourselves a cube. Um, this is going to be 50 by 50 by, ooh, I think we only need 10. And for ease of use, I'm going to center it. So, so there we are. And we can see, basically, that our object takes up the whole thing. Now, I, I, you know, it's nice for actually viewing your object, but for the most part, I don't like the the OpenCSG view on OpenSCAD. I prefer to see things thrown together so you can actually kind of get a get a gist of what you're looking at. So you can see that this is not really uh, a, a decent object. I think I'm going to have to create this a bit bigger. Let's see how far 75 gets me. Oops, uh, hit the wrong button there. 75 doesn't seem to be getting me anywhere. We have to go full 100. I forget how big my complex object is. Oh yeah, there we are. We need to get quite a bit larger. So, um, in fact, looking at the size of that thing, um, well, actually, here, here's the thing. When I created complex object, you might remember that I included some global variables in there. In fact, I remember one of them was named CO radius. So I'm just going to say that uh, times 2.2 and the same thing here, CO radius times 2.2 and we're going to get ourselves that object and this will actually change based on a thingamajig so this is a sort of a thingamajig locker and you can see that uh, by a nice coincidence it just kind of, it's just barely large enough there I could have put any values in but 2.2 seems to be, have been perfect for the values that I'm currently using um, so I don't really want this thing in the middle here so I kind of want to move my object up, or actually maybe I want to move complex object down a bit. Um, so let's translate complex object. Uh, let's see. I think we can do it at um, CO height, another variable I have defined in complex object, uh, divided by 2. And I also want to move it down. So let's move it down. So now you can see I'm actually digging into my object here. So if I go back into my regular OpenCSG view, you can see I have a spot here that is perfect for this. But you do see um, one problem. These holes that I put inside of Thingamajig, let me uh, let me see if we can't, uh, or not, not Thingamajig, but complex object, the holes I put in complex object. Let's see if I can see that. Um, these holes are are supposed to be negative space, but there's supposed to be negative space everywhere. Like a bolt is supposed to go through those things. So, um, what are we going to do? Is the question. You know, how 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 do we turn this this void inside of our complex object into, uh, I guess, a positive for Thingamajig to use as a negative? Well, the answer is simple. We have to change complex object. So. Uh, let's go back into complex object, which I have sitting right here, and I'm going to condition this. Um, I like to do this a lot. Uh, something I call, um, I usually come up with some, some name or something like that. I'm going to say use screws. So use screws, and of course if I'm going to be modifying this, I should probably take a look at viewing it. Um, so right now, use screws is nothing, and therefore nothing happens. But uh, if I already use this use screws, let me see this. I'm going to copy this guy, put him right here. Better make that small. Um, condition this to say if use screws. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again. OpenSCAD needs a better uh, 
a better um, uh, editor. Sorry there, I'm trying to think and type at the same time, and it doesn't always work. Uh, let's see, and if not use screws, I also have to condition this one. Otherwise, it just subtracts it right out after I add it. So, uh, you can see I have some screws in there, and I'm just going to make these crazy like we're going to say two and two. Make them identical. And apparently, I can't do that. So, what I'm actually going to do equals zero. And equals one. Oops, better make this double equal comparator. Uh, so this is more what I meant to do. And in fact, I think I better make this three, three. That sounds good. Yeah, I think that will probably do it. Um, so basically, what I've done here is uh, I've parameterized this. So if I pass it a one it puts those screws in. If I pass it zero, it takes those screw holes out. So the actual object that I'm going to print out is going to look like this, but when I'm using this in another modeler, in another script, I'm probably going to want it to look like this so that it can be used as a negative. So now that I have this, let's go back into our thingamajig file, and I'm going to pass that one to complex object. Uh, and probably make it real here. So, oops, fatal flaw. You always have to remember when you're doing this to take out the one you're not, uh, the, take out your, your call to your module inside the script that defines it. Otherwise, you get, you get some big problems. So, now I have this and it has the correct screw holes in the right place. And uh, I could do something with this if I was so inclined. Um, I'm actually going to go and define a couple of things. Uh, for example, I'm going to say thingamajig height, and I'm going to make this equal to 20, because I don't like the 10 I'm using right now. Plus, I need to define that in case I use this somewhere else. Basically, a rule of thumb, any variable you think you might use in another script that you include this from, move it there. So, now I have a decent sized object here. And, uh, yeah, I've just created a nice complex object using a complex object. And I can print this out, and hopefully these two things will fit together. Uh, tolerances don't always make that true, but at least you have a starting point. Um, you could always do something like scale up one of your objects or the other, but not to say objects with interior objects don't really work because otherwise uh, the radiuses of these from the center point get a little out of whack. But I hope you've seen a pretty good example of how to use a complex object in another complex object uh, and how you can change your original complex object and parameterize it in order to make it more useful for modeling with. Uh, and I hope you find something really fun to use this with. Uh, see you next time.